Hi, we're on The Great Rubino. This is my first ever interview conducted via Zoom or online via video. And I'm here with Royce Isaacs, professional wrestler extraordinaire. Royce, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Uh, I did, uh, did my home workout today already. I'm, I think I actually might do another one later. Uh, my, uh, my homie, uh, I don't know if I should dive him out like this, but whatever. Uh, old uh old uh, simon gotch uh sent me some ddp yoga so i've been trying that out i did i did some neck exercises first and then i did some core with uh old ddp so i'm i'm kind of digging it so far it's not <laughs> it's it's a change up it's a little bit different um but but i like it every, i've met ddp like two or three times and every time he tries to sell me i'm doing the yoga he, he's a salesman from the second you meet Dude. him it's unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> he's all about it he is but to be fair it's it's interesting and it's different i still like i'm a meathead i gotta do my weights i gotta do my like squats all that stuff but uh it i i have been meaning to try it so i guess if we're gonna take something positive out of the whole being quarantined at home and all this stuff it is nice to finally get a chance to at least, like i'm using it supplementary to like all my workouts and it is interesting and different and like i'm sure it'll be really good for my joints which are all messed up from years of wrestling so absolutely so tell me a little bit about your upbringing, um, maybe your Jewish life as a kid, and just so fans get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I had a really, I guess, unique uh, or different kind of uh, upbringing as far as, uh, so my mom's Jewish, so obviously I am Jewish, um, but my dad's uh, Catholic. So it was like kind of a weird when worlds collide type thing, but they were both really cool about like, neither was like super... Um, like high pressure, like I never really felt like, oh, like I need to pick a side or whatever. I just naturally kind of gravitated towards my mom's side more, I guess. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was, it's, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I'm glad that they also were both like so open-minded and accepting, um, especially my dad, because I obviously went to something that wasn't, you know, that, that he could have like been like, Hey, what are you doing, son? You know, I'm me and my dad are really close. Me and my dad uh, watched wrestling together as a kid, and so like that was a big part of my upbringing. And so like, I don't know, he's my biggest fan, and he's always been a big supporter. And I'm glad that he's you know always been really cool about everything. So it's like I I have a really good support base from both of my parents, uh, whether it was uh, my dad in terms of wrestling and my mom in terms of kind of like the religion and uh all, all that stuff with my upbringing i uh i was born in connecticut uh married in connecticut and i lived there for my first eight years and then we moved to denver colorado when i was eight and i lived there other than uh going to college in uh iowa i was in denver for like 20 years and then i moved out to la i'm in la now uh for like the last two years so a little over two years now i guess so it's i've been all over a little bit uh but i love i'm loving la it's it is nice, like the weather's perfect here. Um, you know, people are crazy, but it's good. <laughs> it's LA crazy. So yeah. how'd you get how'd you get your start in wrestling and where are some of the first like promotions you began really wrestling and where'd you train, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, so I um I started out I I had wanted to try wrestling for a while. I had loved it since I was a kid. Um, but there wasn't really much of a scene in Denver at the time uh, where I'd been living. And I didn't know, like, I, w I wasn't sure if I was going to, like, move somewhere to try wrestling because I, I, I knew I wanted to get into it. Um, and I missed competing in something after, after college sports. And so I was, I was looking for something, looking for something, looking for something. And a friend's girlfriend uh, found a local show in Denver uh, called Lucha Libre and Laughs. It still runs. In, in Denver, Colorado, uh, and it was, like, not even good wrestling at the time. Like, now it's amazing, but at the time, it was, like, maybe, if we were lucky, a hundred of us in there watching it, and, like, it was real, like, sloppy. They were still trying to figure out the show. Uh, they do stand-up comedy plus wrestling, so it's kind of a variety show, um, but I just remember the, the atmosphere was, like, electric, and I was just, like, this is something I want to be a part of even though it's a little, you know, primitive and whatever. And uh, I talked to the promoter, uh, Nick Gosser, and uh, uh, your, your homies, uh, uh, Colt and Eric, have both actually wrestled for them numerous times, uh, uh, quite a few times. 
Uh, and uh, actually, I've wrestled both of them for Nick Gosser now at this <laughs> point. Um, and so I, t I talked to him and I was just like, how do I get involved in this? How do I become a wrestler? Like, where is there to train around here? So I went to, um, he, to he told me where to go. And I went to this place called The Butcher's Shop, which it still runs. Uh, they still have classes there. But at the time, uh, the guy that I got trained under is not a trainer anymore. His name is Lonnie Valdez. And so it was in Commerce City, Colorado, which is like, probably the last place to get gentrified in all of Denver, which is Denver Denver's really nice. But like the day that I got there, um, there was this guy Bubba who I thought was like assistant trainer, but turns out he was just living like in the butcher shop, which was like a storage <laughs> space in Commerce City. And he's standing out front and he just goes, oh, someone stole my truck. Like just now, like someone had stolen his truck from out in front of the butcher shop. And then I was like, oh yeah, let me go park my car and hopefully that doesn't get stolen so I can go learn how to wrestle. But I was all about it. And like from the second that I started training, I was training like five or six days a week. I think, so I was going through like a tough breakup. My trainer was going through a tough divorce. So there was three classes that were offered per week, but pretty much every day I'd be texting like, hey dude, if you're free, like I'm free after work, like you wanna train, or it's the weekend, I wasn't working shows yet. Hey man, can we train? So I was training five, six times a week and quite a few of those were like one-on-one -on -one sessions. So it was like, I didn't start training until I was 25, but I feel like I almost like got like this, like just intensive like course in it where I was just like, all right, how can I get like caught up back to speed of, of where I should be? Awesome. So now you're in NWA on Power, a great show. It's on YouTube, but uh, it's really just sort of brought back a lot of the old experience, I think. I, I love watching because it feels like nostalgic, even though it's new. Um, and there's obviously nostalgia uh, wrestlers. Um, but so what's that been like? You, you've been tag team champion with Thomas Latimer. What's that experience been like, uh, Billy Corey and all that? Is, are you enjoying it? Dude, uh, yeah, yeah, man. The NWA has been pretty freaking wild. Um, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm super glad, especially at a time like this, to have uh, a team like the NWA to have my back and whatnot. Um, you know, I, I think it's really cool that what we're doing is, I, like, I don't know uh, uh, if, if the people that are watching this have necessarily try, uh, seen NWA Power, but if you haven't, I think it's an actually, like, different, type of show like it's very unique in terms of its presentation mm -hmm. we're doing studio wrestling there's like there's no entrance music which sounds weird at first but when you get to actually watching it it's like things just happen happen ha like it's like boom you're in the ring the match happens the match is done boom there's like the next promo or, or backstage segment or whatever like everything happens so fast I think especially now that like and I'm including myself in this like I'm really bad about like I'll get I'll be watching something and then I'm like, oh, here's like a 30 second break where I can get on my phone and I'm down on my phone for two minutes. And before you know it, you're like, you missed the opening spot or you missed some important dialogue in some show that you're Netflixing or whatever. And it's like, I feel like to me, power doesn't really give you the chance to do that because it's like always just go, go, go. The matches are pretty quick paced. It's good old school working, um, but like with enough of a new school refresher. Um, I, I think it's actually just a unique product. Like, I, I don't think at least in my opinion, I don't think there's been this unique of an alternative product since like Lucha Underground stopped being a thing where it was like, oh, this is really trying to do its own thing and be in its own interesting lane. Um, obviously, it's also really cool because I'm, I'm 31. So working with Billy Corgan is like, wow, like that's <laughs> yeah. like he was like the man when I was a kid. So it's like, oh, this is like really like it seems like almost like a like an alternative reality kind of thing where you're like, hi, wait, what? <laughs> but he's, but Billy, the thing is, uh, especially if you've been around the Midwest, like Billy's been around pro wrestling for a long time. Like this isn't just something that he randomly decided one day I'm into this and, and did it. Like Billy has been all about this life for, for quite a bit of time and he's put his time in and paid his dues, even, you know, working with smaller indies in Chicago and whatnot. And then obviously he was working with uh, TNA back when it was TNA for a second. Um, and then now he, you know, him kind of getting to do his own thing with the NWA has been really, really cool. Um, yeah, man. Like I can't say enough positive things about like my experience getting to like Tom's Tom's a great dude. He's got a wealth of knowledge and 
he's like really funny, which is important too, when you're going to be on the road with someone and you're going to be spending day, like long, long days with them and, and whatnot. He, me and him do a good job of keep, keeping each other uh, entertained and, and also hopefully, you know, making some, some good wrestling memories at, at the same time. Um, you know, like we got to wrestle against Rock and Roll Express quite a few times, which the fact that they're like, you know, like between the two of them, 60 years deep in the game, 70 years deep in the game or whatever, and they're still just killing it, like has been really cool. And for us as a new tag team to get to work with a tag team that's probably been teaming longer than anyone else, you know, maybe in the history of wrestling, like we get to kind of dip into that, that vat of knowledge and, and expand our own knowledge from that, which has really, really uh, been awesome. And then I guess the last like real big experience that uh, sticks out in my mind, I'm personally, I'm a really big Scott Steiner fan. And uh, as you can see, I'm going to real quick, I'll just show uh, mm -hmm. that's a Scott Steiner poster on my wall right there. Like that's <laughs> like my, my dude, my hero growing up. Um, and uh, I got to tag with him, tag team with him um, for the NWA, which like to me, like that was like, oh my God, like this is happening, like, dream come true. Like that's someone that me and my dad watched together when I was ki a kid. And then to get to kind of come like full 360, full circle with it. Um, I don't know, like it was like, a, it, it was just like a, like almost like a surreal experience. But, but yeah, man, like Scotty was awesome, man. That was really cool. And we're wishing him a, a speedy recovery. I know he, he uh, was a little sick there and. Uh, he some, some issues. It sounds like he's getting better, so. Good. Good. Yeah. And, and uh, it's just a great, it's also a great talent roster. And you guys have really matched the tag team. I mean, it seems the second you guys were on the show, it seemed like you've been uh, hit the ground running and really made sense as a tag team, which is obviously when you see two people who have sort of different paths as uh, wrestling careers, sometimes it doesn't always work right away. Sure. But it seems like you guys have. So tell us a little bit about um, what wrestling's, what's going on in wrestling right now. So a lot of people in independent sort of um, businesses because of COVID-19, the coronavirus are out of work and are just sitting and waiting. I know uh, specifically it's affecting the wrestling community. What can you say about it? Uh, I'm sure you're talking to your friends. What are you guys doing to keep busy? Are shows happening at all? What's, what's sort of the mindset of a wrestler right now? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's really tough. Like one, I think one of the first things that, came into my mind when everything when all the madness really like started to uh to, to happen and, and everything went down I realized like how lucky me personally like I, I obviously it's this is tough the tough times for me like there's no shows going on you know everything that I was supposed to be on was canceled Crockett Cup was coming up and that was like going to be a big event for me and Tom obviously being tag team specialists and whatnot um but despite like I mean, it sucks to be quarantined. It sucks to be not able to do a lot of the stuff that we want to do and all that. But like me personally, it's like, I have to count my blessings because I do have a team like the NWA that has my back, um, you know, that pays me a monthly salary and whatnot, because all I could think when everything first went down was back when I, before I had signed my NWA contract, when it's like, I was uh, Ubering, um, working for a moving company and doing pro wrestling shows on the weekend, it's like, I could, I, you know, if, if it wasn't for the NWA, I'm this close to then just having zero work. And it's like, what do I do at that point? Like, I would have just gone from, you know, hustling and grinding. It's like, I, it's not like I was making a ton of money Ubering or doing moving jobs. Like those weren't, those aren't like, I wasn't like saving up for a six bedroom mansion or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that was, so I could get by to be able to afford to go from show to show and not have to, you know, worry about, you know, my wrestling income as much because it's like, I was, I was making, making ends meet and whatnot and, and doing quite a bit of work to do it. Um, you know, I, I would have been completely like just out of a job entirely all like out of like this. And that would have been like, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. You know what I mean? So like, it's been really cool to have the NWA support system there so that like things aren't, you know, Oh boy, like I'm crushing it so that like, I'm like, you know, spending all this money, but it's like, I can afford to go and get groceries and, you know, I can uh, afford to, you know, not have to worry about what I'm going to do. It's like, okay, cool. Like stay in shape, 
keep on my diet, keep trying to create content so that the NWA can utilize it in some way. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, times are tough. Times are tough for all of us. Uh, but you know, times are definitely, uh, you know, like my independent friends, like I still have obviously a ton of friends that, you know, don't work for the NWA or don't work for a big company. And it's like, that's really, really tough. Like, I don't know, you know, like my heart goes out to those kind of people and like whatever they have to do to, you know, get by and make those ends meet. It's like the world is, world is hurting and not just the professional wrestling world. Like the entire world is hurting right now. There's a lot of people going through some really tough times and trying to figure out how, you know, it's like we're at the end of March right now. Like how are you going to, you know, get to April and June if, if, you know, or April, May and June, if, if, you know, we're still in a quarantine state at that point and whatnot. So I want to, I'm going to plug the, anyone who's watching this to support your indie wrestlers, go on their, their websites or their, or prowrestlingtees.com. Uh, Ryan does a great job of helping wrestlers out there uh, sell t-shirts and other things. Um, and uh, our show that we run, uh, our, hope, our hope is still that they, they go. And I know that show, people are itching for that sort of may june sort of released and wrestling come back and all other things so royce where can where can people support you uh maybe buy t-shirts or um you know dvds or whatever you're selling but let, let the fans know where they can find you and uh maybe social media as well yeah of course um so the social media is good obviously at royce isaacs on instagram at royce isaacs on twitter um you know any kind of support there is great i have pictures of my merchandise on there as well i don't have a I should have a pro wrestling tease, but I think I'm like 300 followers short or some crap like that. It's never got it set up. Um, but, uh, but yeah, DM me on there. If you're, if you're trying to buy something, there's also um, on the national wrestling Alliance website, which is www.nationalwrestlingalliance.com. Uh, they have uh, some shirts up for sale that the proceeds are going to help employees, uh, specifically the ones that actually don't have uh, salaries like myself, obviously, because there's, there's quite a few on the, the roster that, you know, like maybe they're working in the graphics department or whatever, and they don't, uh, you know, have that automatic salary. But I think it's also, you know, it's like one of those ways that you can just support kind of all of us at the NWA. So uh, definitely do that. You know, uh, if, if, uh, if you feel so inclined from watching this interview and it entertains you, you know, check out a match on, on YouTube and whatnot, check out power. Um, you know, I, I appreciate all the support and love. And I honestly, especially in a time like this, where, you know, there's a lot of craziness. If, you know, I can keep your mind off of the, the wildness for a little bit. I really, you know, that, that means the world to me. So. All right, Royce, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I'm going to uh, say goodbye and uh, thank our fans for watching. Dude, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thanks.